Hello guys, in this video I'm going to review the Zion Crane 3 lap that I have up here. Uh, I'll tell you the good, the bad, and overall whether I think it's worth spending money on this camera gimbal. So first I'm going to start talking about just the overall design. It's definitely the most unique out of all the gimbals out there. Uh, especially when I'm talking about these kind of single handheld uh, or these kind of mid-size camera gimbals. Uh, this will take up to 10 pounds, by the way. Uh, the battery life is uh, advertised as 7 hours, which for me is still plenty. I mean, I know there's gimbals out there uh, that, are, that will you know, give you well over 10 hours, but for me, especially because they, uh, they allow you to use easy off-the-shelf you know, batteries that you can buy yourself, which are the 18650s, uh, it means that you, know, you, can, you can stock up on extra batteries and you can keep on shooting all day. So. In terms of all those things, it's, I would say, as good as any other gimbal uh, on the market today. And now a quick word from our sponsor. Uh, Skillshare is an online learning community uh, for creators uh, such as myself. Uh, and they have more than 25,000 classes in all sorts of topics. Uh, from business, technology, lifestyle to even uh, different creative topics such as animation, film production, uh, graphic design, music production, uh, and uh, even writing uh, and, and, and a few others. It's also very affordable. Uh, if you get the annual subscription, it comes out to less than $10 a month. If you're a filmmaker like me, definitely you want to check out their film production classes. Uh, you, you can learn things such as color grading for filmmaking, um, for example, cinematography basics, understanding different filmmaking styles, uh, introduction to video marketing, definitely important if you want to get your videos out there and your films and, and get them in front of an audience, uh, storyboarding, something very essential I always talk about, and a whole bunch of other things, whether it's learning how to do effects and after effects for your films. Uh, how to write stories, things like that, editing, master classes. Uh, if you want to learn, if you want to get better, don't hesitate. And actually the first 500 of my subscribers to use the link in the description will get two months free trial. Uh, anyways, now let's get back to the review of the gimbal. The design itself, though, is definitely something that when I first saw it, I was like, what the, what, you know, <laughs> I thought there was something, some kind of a mix up that happened having this, this handle. But since I started using this and I've used this gimbal for about two months, um, it is, it's kind of grown on me and it's actually to a point where some of my other favorite gimbals that I've been using, I've added accessories to kind of mimic this sort of a third handle here and behind. What this handle is good for is if kind of, if you want to transition from the low mode, so from kind of a briefcase mode like this, uh, all the way up to like that, that's what this handle will be really good for. But also if you want to just kind of help support the, the weight of the gimbal, so I would usually hold it like kind of here hold this tripod which converts into a, a, a handle too I would hold it here with my left hand with my right hand I would hold it here behind uh, behind me kind of close to my body and that would uh, kind of help to, uh, kind of spread out the weight I guess between my two arms and I could still uh, with my uh, here thumb on my left finger I could still control the focus so that's kind of how uh, I'll, I'll be running and gunning with this thing so that I could single-handedly operate the the gimbal but I can also change the camera settings control the focus and all those kind of things now one thing uh, that I thought right away is this is not just a handle that kind of sticks out this way but it's something that you can rotate because of this kind of a hinge looking design well it's not so <laughs> if you're like me wondering if you can adjust the angle of this you can't this is uh, stuck in there in that position and that's it and also you can't remove that handle in the back so one I know complaint I've heard from some people is that because you have this thing kind of sticking out here behind you means you can't have the gimbal like as close to your body which would it just makes it easier on your shoulders and on your elbows kind of holding it uh, because you kind of have to have it out a little bit so the arm that's holding the gimbal from be below here is gonna get a bit more tired and it's true I guess but at the same time I, I always would counter and hold it here with my right hand on this handle so for me it wasn't as big of a problem but again if you're kind of using it i think how zion intended uh, for you to use this gimbal then uh you shouldn't really have any problems with this uh with, with holding it that way and in fact when you're uh, using it in briefcase mode or just you know, getting those low angle kind of shots then in that case the handle actually comes in really really handy because it allows you to easily tr uh, transition basically from the low mode to, to high mode. Now kind of starting from the handle maybe here I'll talk about some of the things you, you'll find out there. So uh, at the top of the handle you have uh, the zoom button which I've never actually used because I almost rarely ever use zoom lenses 
and when I did, uh, those were not basically. I, I pretty much used this uh, gimbal exclusively with the Blackmagic Pocket uh, 4K camera. So because of that, that camera doesn't allow any external control, meaning I couldn't connect it to this gimbal and I couldn't externally control it. Um, so in this case, I couldn't control the zoom and things like that. Now I did get an extra motor, which is a servo kind of a motor. Uh, as you can see, one of them I have right now. That's for the controlling the, fo the, the, the focus, basically. And that one you would control it using this dial. Um, if you connected the other one, you could control also the zoom in, in and out up here. Uh, another thing you'll find here is on the side of the the top of the gimbal here, the, the back handle is the switching between the different modes. So reset is just resets your gimbal back to its neutral position. POV it changes it to a POV mode where you, you will follow your pan tilts but also your roll axis. So you can roll the camera left and right. And follow is your follow mode, your regular follow mode uh, on a pan and tilt axis. Uh, if you want to go switch to locked off mode, then you jump in here, you have a trigger here on the front, you have a locked off mode, and then you have the pen follow on the top. So that's kind of what this, this button represents. So depending on where you press it, uh, you would switch to those modes. Uh, you also do have the uh, vertigo mode, I think they call it, where basically it allows you to point the camera up or forward and endlessly kind of rotate on the z-axis and this gimbal definitely works well in that mode uh, personally myself again it's not something that i use all the time i did use the follow and the roll axis in the pov mode but that's about it uh, i'm not one to do those endless you know barrel roll kind of type of shots but if you want to have it that mode you you do have it another thing here on the back of the handle is the little lcd screen so the lcd screen will allow you to see basically your all of your gimbal settings but also your camera settings if you uh, happen to be working with a camera uh, that allows external control so most sony cameras canon cameras you know panasonic cameras you can connect it there's different cables that zion provides and you can connect the, the camera to the gimbal and right here from the back you'll be able to go uh, hit the record button so you can start and stop the camera uh, you can even change your settings like ISO and all that stuff, exposure settings. Now again, for me, again, I've been using the Packet 4K with this, so I haven't been able to test out that function. When I did hook up my Sony A6500, it does work with it, but for me, I don't know, I, I still find it just easier going to the camera and changing the settings because I've gotten used to doing it that way. But I guess once, you know, if I really became familiar with using this, these buttons and it, that was the kind of the first thing that I would think of, then yeah, I, I can see these buttons being handy. Um, another thing you have here is this go button, uh, which allows you to switch to another mode, which is sort of like your sports mode. So you're still in follow mode, pan and tilt axis, but it allows you much quicker camera moves. Uh, and it's again, it's good to kind of have this mode right there in the back. Now this gimbal, just like any other gimbal on the market today, has an app. Uh, if, that you can connect to and through that app you can change all the settings again of this gimbal but you can actually do more and one thing that I was very surprised with is uh, that you can connect basically uh, your phone and use your phone as a monitor uh, and also not only that but from that you can you can for example use it to to do face tracking or uh, again control your camera things like that and the reason uh, why you can do that is because it will work with any camera by the way even works with the packet 4k so you take your video out, plug it into the video in here to the controller box uh, here on the underneath of the, the camera plate. And then that will send out a Wi-Fi signal that you connect to on your phone. Once you have your phone connected, you'll be able to, uh, just from your phone, again, control the gimbal, but also uh, you can start and stop the camera, do all those things. And you can actually see a live video feed uh, right from the gimbal, which is really cool in case, let's say you have this, camera in like a really weird position where you can't see the back of the screen or like in this case where sometimes I'll be working with the, the Blackmagic Pocket 4K camera and I just again had an, an angle where I couldn't see the monitor very well or the, the LCD on the back of the camera and this camera doesn't have a flip out LCD. So again that's when having that app was really good. You can change the settings by the way. At first I was using it and kind of got a little disappointed because the quality didn't seem to be that good but that's because you can actually change the quality setting on there. So when you put it to the finest video quality it looks pretty sharp. You can actually use it to pull focus which is what I did. Or if you wanted to you could actually use it as um, I guess sort of a second uh, you know assistant monitor. You can give it to 
to your assistant to, for example, for them to pull focus for you or things like that. Um, or, you know, or even just to monitor the shot for you. So it's really kind of cool. And if you're going to be using that function a lot, I would say you definitely want to get this little accessory uh, from Zion, which allows you to mount your phones, tablets, whatever, uh, mobile device. And you can attach it here to the front like I have it. You can attach it here to the back handle. Um, you know, or you can just attach it to any other accessory that you want. And also, if you're going to be pulling focus, another accessory you probably want to get is the, the you know, motor here, the servo motor. Now, both of them are very easy to hook up. You just have a little control cable you plug in here to the, the controller box, and that's pretty much it. And once you're plugged in, you can use it to pull focus, or like I said, you can use it to, uh, you know, zoom in or out on your lens, depending on how you set it. And again, you can set all that up using the app or using just here going through the menu and this dial kind of a wheel that you have on the back. My only complaint maybe is that, um, maybe not a complaint, but maybe a slight improvement, you know, something to think of for the future for Zion is when I was holding this gimbal like this or, you know, when I have it like down on the tripod like I have it right now, I, it's not easy to see that's the LCD. I kind of have to always duck down a little bit and see it like this or I would just end up lifting up this thing. Uh, the gimbal kind of tilting it and then uh, going through the menu. So that's the only thing. Maybe if they can somehow do that LCD kind of tilted, so it's kind of facing me more where the the back of my of my screen uh, of my camera screen, you know, basically monitor would be would be kind of just to again make it more visible. I think that would be one slight improvement. Uh, here, if you go further down the handle, like I said, you can attach these different accessories like the, the your holder for the phone. Here you have here the the compartment for the batteries. And again, it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty straightforward, 18650 batteries, lithium-ion batteries, so easily available. And then going further down here, like I said, you have your, uh, here kind of main part of the body, where here's your power button that's located right above the focus wheel. Uh, behind here is your joystick for, as you keep pen, penning and tilting, or just basically adjusting the position of your camera. Here, like I said, in the front, you have the, the different, uh, the locked and the pen follow mode buttons. You also have a little here connections, uh, IO ports, which is uh, for USB. So if you want to change different settings, firmware upgrades, things like that on the gimbal, that's where you do it. You have your tripod, which you can detach, but if you want to leave it there, you can also use it as a handle. Uh, and then if you go further up the gimbal, that's where you're going to get the actual motor. So you have your roll motor, you have the handle here. This is the, uh, actually this is a pen motor, this is your roll motor, and then here on the top you'll have your uh, pitch motor. And uh, you'll notice though, as I'm kind of moving the gimbal around, it's not on, uh, it's, it's kind of shaking there, but it's not really moving. And that's because it actually, uh, you have these locking mechanisms here on the back. So for example, you can lock or unlock the roll motor. And this is actually very handy for a when you're balancing the the camera because you can kind of lock all the all the motors and just worry about one axis at a time. But it's also very handy when you're traveling with this, like especially with this camera when I was traveling it because it is kind of heavy uh, with that lens and everything. So it's kind of nice to be able to lock it all the axes and then I can kind of walk around with it easily. Uh, you know, it doesn't get in the way and that kind of stuff. Um, now, as as you see, uh, once you kind of put the camera under. Uh, if obviously depending on what size camera you put on there the whole thing can become a little bit big thank god though that the gimbal itself is pretty light uh, it's only it was if like, just over four pounds basically weight so it's not not the heaviest gimbal out there uh, and also what I like is that this camera plate here on the top it, it allows you a lot of movement left and right and all that stuff so hopefully the example shots I've been showing you guys kind of give you an idea of just the kind of cool shots that you can get all of them were filmed uh, using this gimbal and this camera combo. Um, most of it was shot on this 24mm Rokinon lens uh, with a Metabone Speed Booster uh, adapter. So it's kind of a, so almost like an APS-C size uh, image size sensor. Uh, if you're just kind of wondering about the field of view uh, you know, that I was using on, the, on these shots. Uh, so as you can see, you can get smooth shots. Now if you're running with it, or really pushing the gimbal with all this weight that I, you have up here, then sometimes you will see the jitters. Uh, if you're using this with a much lighter gimbal, like when I was using it with the Sony a6500, then you won't notice pretty much any shaking or any jitter. It doesn't matter whether you're walking or running. So Zion has definitely uh, delivered when it comes to the, the, just the usability and quality with this product. Uh, and then again, they're not in this game of making camera gimbals for the first time. They've done this quite a bit of 
uh, quite a few times already. They've released quite a few products, so uh, I was expecting for them to, to do this. So it's good to know that they've, again, put out a quality product and addressed some of the issues that people had with the Zion Crane 2 uh, gimbal, which, I, I, well, you know, you can watch my review of that one, you'll see. I also liked that it. it was really only one minor complaint there that I had. Uh, and then they even addressed that, which was being able to change the neutral position in the full follow mode. So overall, I mean, I, I think it's a great gimbal. It's an interesting design, having this handle here in the back. Some people will love it, some maybe will not. Maybe some people will hate it. it worked flawlessly, easy to use. Like I said, the app works well. Now, uh, the app I did notice sometimes when I was using the video transmission, it did tend to crash. Not a lot, but sometimes it crashed. But then again, depending on which phone I was using. So when I was using my Samsung uh, Galaxy phones, yeah, then they were having a bit more of a problem. The iPhone seemed to work a bit better. So again, it's kind of pick and choose uh, and maybe how many apps you have running in the background. I'm sure that kind of, you know, is a deciding factor. Especially when you're doing the video transmission to your phone and doing it in high quality. It seems like it's really taxing the, the phone. I think in terms of the extra functionality that you get, especially the wireless video transmission, that is really cool. Uh, that that is, I would say, this gimbal wins in terms of just overall, you know, reliability, the design of it. I mean, it's solidly built and all that stuff. Uh, it's it's just as good as any other gimbal out there. So really, it just it's gonna probably come down to your preference, and maybe what kind of deal that you can find on this. So uh, definitely check out the links in the description of my video for the latest prices and deals on this gimbal. Uh, and if you're, you know, if it seems like it hits all the buttons for you guys, then just go ahead, buy it, try it out, or if, even if better, if you can, rent this gimbal out, try it out for yourself, and then buy it. Uh, but if you're wondering my opinion, yes, it's I can I can definitely recommend this gimbal. It's reliable and it's gonna give you smooth shots, which is the most important thing. Anyways. Uh, that's it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, let me know in the comment section below if you want to kind of see more in-depth information, whether it's about this gimbal or some of the other things, or filmmaking tutorials and that kind of stuff. Uh, then as always, head to my website, TomAntosFilms.com. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!